Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first Thursday Talk. Uh, so what is Thursday Talk? Well, to make it short, uh, I want to try something on Thursdays where I just talk, whether it be through Instagram Live, through YouTube, through Facebook, recorded or live. It, I, I haven't even decided. So to do a very quick introduction, I am the youth leader for the New Britain Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church, and well, this year is a different year. We're digital. That wasn't planned. It happened. We're all adapting, and at the beginning of the whole quarantine, I was scrambling to learn how to live stream and so that I could have a monthly youth service, and I have been doing that. However, now that we've already done, I believe, six of them, I'm realizing that one youth service a month isn't enough so i want to try different things the monthly service that i've done so far i'm going to keep that as it is that's good that's going to be a standard but i want to try different formats and that's what thursday talk is there is no format today's format is will, will most likely not be used again so each time i'm going to try to do something different if i can and the whole point is to just get the word out and uh just break the ice get myself used to this new era of digital evangelism because that's that's the hand we were dealt uh so yeah with that said i almost didn't do this because i didn't have as much time to rehearse today's message as i wanted but then again i remembered that the whole point of doing this is so that i i stopped trying to be so harsh on myself so i decided i'm just gonna do it i am just going to wing it so we have a message and we have, yeah, I guess that's it. It's a message. <laughs> this is live. It's mostly not scripted. There is a script. It's actually right here. But it's, I'm not going to even go over most of it. And it, the script just sort of ends. I didn't really finish writing it because I wanted it to be more natural, at least for this first one. So before we start, I guess we'll bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much because you are wonderful and good to us. This year, you have really put us to the test of how well we can adapt and how well we can learn new methods of evangelism. For years, I have been complaining that paper evangelism is dead and that we need to go digital yet i didn't do much to help with that change yet here we are lord diving right in because well we don't have much of a choice sometimes we gotta be against a uh, rock and a hard place to get things done as the old saying goes necessity is the mother of all invention so with that said please bless us this evening as we do this brief informal and somewhat improvised service. And so we ask you this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Another thing is I don't even know if people are going to show up. I didn't really advertise this as much as I probably could have. But hey, it's it's life. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, our scripture is going to be Exodus chapter 3, verses 11 through 14. And Exodus chapter 4, verses 1, 5, and 10 through 13. Now, I know that's a lot. Ideally, I would recommend you guys read all the way from chapter, Exodus 3, 11, all the way down to Exodus 4, 13. But in the interest of time, I'm going to abbreviate it because I think we only have an hour time limit on Instagram Lab, and I have no idea how long this is going to take. So I'm trying to get through it quickly, 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 quickly. So, with that said, let's read it. All right, Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites to Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Chapter 4, verse 1. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, 
the Lord did not appear to you. Verse 5. This said the Lord is so that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Verse 10. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servants. I am slow of speech and tongue. 11. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. 13. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. There is so much that we could say about this. And again, in the interest of, in the interest of time, I'm trying to condense it and stick to the, uh, the, the main parts. But basically, God is sending Moses to free the Israelites. And the first response that Moses has to seeing this or to hearing God's command is, Who am I? Wait, where, where was it? Yeah, in verse three, uh, chapter 311, Moses says, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And that's, that's a good question. I don't know if he was being humble or if he had been humbled, right? Moses grew up in the court of the Pharaoh. So by all means, he was royalty. He was in a good position to go there. That being said, he was a wanted man. He, uh, he committed the crime of murder and he ran away. And because of that, he is now a disgraced prince of Egypt. So I don't know from which one of those two positions Moses was coming from. Was he coming from the fact that he felt bad? Or is he just does he just not want to do it? And he's saying, who am I that, to, that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? But when he asked that question, God lets him know, I will be with you. So God is saying, Moses... I am with you. That's who you are. You are someone who is walking with God. But then in verse 13, Moses says, well, suppose I go to them and they don't believe me. No. And they ask me, well, exactly who sent you? What am I supposed to say to them? So at this point, God tells them, I am has sent me to you. So he basically reveals to Moses his name. And yet in chapter four, verse one, Moses still is looking for excuses. He says, well, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't think that the Lord really did appear t- uh, to me? And then the Lord goes into a whole thing where he's going to make Moses do wonders, throwing his staff into a snake and giving him a, a, a leopard hand and all those things. And once he does all of that, all those wonders through Moses as a demonstration of what he's going to do. In verse 10, Moses says, oh, pardon me, but I have never been eloquent. Uh, I have problems speaking, which for the record, so do I. And then the Lord uh, is starting to get uh, annoyed with him in verse 11. He's like, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? He's, 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 his patience is being tested, rightfully so, because Moses keeps coming up with all these excuses. And he's like, well, who do you think I am? I am the Lord God. I can I make people blind. I can restore their sight. I can do everything. And you're telling me that you can't talk? Uh, In verse 12, the Lord says, Now go, I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. So God himself is saying, you're going to go, and I'm going to give you the ability. I'm going to teach you myself of what to say. And then in verse 13, Moses says, Pardon me, but please send someone else. So it is mind-blowing that after this whole conversation, right, they're at the burning bush. God is revealing everything to him. God does the, the, the turns the rod into a snake. It gives him everything. And Moses is still like, oh, uh, I don't want to do it. Yeah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do I can't do it. I got problems. Look, and no one's going to believe me. Why would everybody want to listen to me? And it's, it's an interesting thing. It really is because he was standing in holy, unholy ground. Uh, he, he took off his sandals. And yet he didn't really understand what was happening at that moment. Uh, so why am I sharing all of this? Well, like I said, this year has been a little weird. 
we've been pushed into digital evangelism. And a few weeks ago, actually last month, I was asked to do a message for a Zoom service, which I hadn't really used Zoom before, but I was doing it for the uh, Sky Up. Excuse me, Sky as it's possible to connect. So I did that Zoom service, and the overall the topic of that message was we need to take that gospel out into the internet. So this is kind of like a follow up to that, but not really. You see, this message is something that I've been meaning to do for a while, and the message is actually quite simple. It's just how to preach. I call it preaching 101. And you see, before I get into that, first I want to share a little background on myself. You see, I'm shy. Like, I am extremely shy. Those of you who already know me, you're going to say that that's not nothing new. We knew that, right? I am that guy that stands quietly in a corner in order to avoid socializing. I'm the guy who feels awkward around you people. I'm the guy who struggles just to say hi to his coworkers. I am legitimately shy and I know and I know a lot of people say that nowadays they're always walking around like oh my gosh I'm so shy I'm the shyest person on the planet but they're, they're not they're usually intro extroverts they love the attention I'm actually legitimately shy I spend most of the time in my room because engaging in conversations with other people leaves me feeling drained honestly I avoid church camp meetings just because of the large amounts of people they make me feel stressed even if I don't engage with them. I am that person that if I have to talk with someone, I just stay there shocked like a deer in headlights because it is, it is, it is nerve-wracking for me. But why am I sharing all of this? Well, first of all, because I can totally relate with Moses. You see, I too am slow to speak, as I mentioned earlier. I oftentimes stutter and I get tongue-tied easily. And I have stage fright. That's, that's the worst. Occasionally, my brain just shuts down and I can't remember anything that I was going to say. And again, those of you who know me and have known me for a while, you have experienced this firsthand. How I'll be doing a Sabbath school or a message or whatever. And all of a sudden, I just stop right there in my tracks. I look up and I just go, I completely forgot what I was going to say. It happens to me all the time. So I, I, I get it. I understand why Moses was trying to get out of it. I'm the exact same way. But the thing is, I always tend to just do it. I go out there and I get it done. I deliver the message. Right now I'm talking to a camera, so this is to me is easy. There's literally nobody here. But oftentimes I have in fact stood in front of a crowd and delivered a message. That being said, today's focus is not me. No, today I'm focusing and everyone else. Because as shy as I am, I've noticed that when it comes to church folk, if you ask them to do a message, typically the answer is no. They say they don't know how, they say they're too shy, they say they don't have any talent. And honestly, that may or may not be the case, but it never stopped me. And so much like Moses was looking for excuses to get out of it, I have noticed firsthand that this happens all the time at church. People saying, oh, I can't do a message because I'm not, I'm shy and I, and I, and I don't have talent. I'm shy. I'm, I'm shyer than them. So why don't they want to do it? The funny thing is, these are the same people who are always complaining like, oh, brother Stevenson is preaching again. Why is he always preaching? Why not give someone else a chance? Because nobody wants to. We would love other people to take a chance and preach, but everybody seems to be like afraid of going out there uh, to preach. And I like to remind you that I too am shy. I am shyer than most of you. I am tired of like, I am more shy than everyone who says they're shy and don't want to preach. And I don't believe I have any preaching talent per se. I think the biggest difference between me and them is that I learned through trial and error. I threw myself out there and I burned. And then I tried again and I learned from my mistakes and so forth and so forth. So today I'm here to share with you some of the knowledge that I have gained. Uh, impart on you some of the wisdom I've acquired throughout the years. I do this so that you too may be able to share the message that the Lord has given you. So you want to preach. Where do we start? 
Well, the first thing is prayer. Yes, I know, that's completely cliche. But before you share the message uh, of the Lord, you first need to seek the Lord so he can give you a message. It's basic, I know, and you may have already known this, but I have to mention it because if I don't, everyone's going to burn me in the comments saying, no, the first thing you got to do is, pre is pray. You didn't say that. Nobody believe. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Trust Just because I don't say something for doesn't mean I don't know about it. So yes, prayer, that's step number one. All right, prayer. Okay, so let's look at other, other things. So you get your prayers out of the way. What's next? Well, up next, you need a message. You want a message that's going to bless the audience. Please avoid chastising them. Uh, a common mistake among first-time preachers is that they just start going off on a long list of sins that the audience needs to change right now. It really isn't a good approach because psychologically, human beings go on a defensive when they are verbally attacked. This means that they won't listen or even consider anything that, you're, that they're being told at that point in time. So you don't want to go that route. Instead, what I recommend is... Uh, and you preach to yourself, all right? You be your primary audience. Give the message that was gonna bless you and it's gonna help you grow. And I know that seems weird, like why am I preaching to the audience? Me, well, part of that is the golden rule. You're not gonna be too harsh on yourself, right? So if you're preaching to yourself and you let the audience know that you're preaching to yourself, then there's that relatability, there's that, there's that connection. And I am following some of my notes and I completely lost where I am, so give me a minute. So yeah, you are your primary audience. Get the message that will help you grow. Make it personal towards yourself and not others. This is something that I always remember when preparing a message. Uh, I'm mainly preaching to myself in hopes others can relate with me. And yes, I know that like two minutes ago, I said that today I'm not focusing on myself. I'm focusing on everyone else. This is like the one time that I'm breaking a rule, okay? All right, I, I, I know, I know, chill. Uh, so, okay, so here's another tip for beginners. Keep it simple. Your first sermon doesn't have to be mind-blowing. In fact, it most likely will not be. So just focus on the point. Keep it short and simple. Easy to understand. It's your first time. You can get away with it now. Right? Later, you're not going to let you do that. But now you can. Also, short messages make it so most folks can follow you without getting distracted. Nobody's looking at their watch or no one's falling asleep. It's just short and simple which is what you want, right? We've all been there. There's always that brother or sister, typically a brother, who just loves to preach. And he goes up there and he talks and he talks and he talks and he talks. And oh boy, does he talk. And eventually you're just like, I got things to do, man. Like wrap it up. I need to go home, right? You don't want to be that guy, especially not on your first time. So keep it short to the point. Tr trust me, no one's going to be like, really? Five minutes? I came to... No one's really going to say that except for the... You know, there's always that small group that likes to complain about everything. But they're going to complain about you regardless of what you do. So ignore them, right? Everyone's going to be blessed that you made it short, simple, to the point, and that they learned a little bit more about you. Because again, you are preaching mainly to yourself. I need better lighting in here. Ah, is that better? I blinded myself just now, so I have no idea. All right, so, all right. Now, all of you with your attention, love, and selves suddenly feel shy at the thought of standing in front of everybody. This is normal. It's called stage fright. The, the more you speak publicly, the less stretch stage fright you will experience. And this is why I, I always tend to push myself into the spotlight. I'm extremely shy and I'm trying to overcome that and it's not going to happen naturally. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll continue pushing myself in front of large crowds so that one day I can just get over it completely. I mean, I've gotten over some of it. And it, it, it does help. But how does that help you specifically right now? You've never been up there before that I know of. Fear right now is at an all-time high. Also, I'm saying right now a lot. Well, my next tip is a bit of a hack for you, right? Start with a small audience. Look, we all have a service at our church where people just don't show up, okay? Let's not pretend otherwise. Uh, it's typically just a small handful of members that show up on this particular thing. For my church, it happens to be Wednesday night prayer meetings, okay? We're lucky if we get eight members. And I use the term we 
very loosely here because I rarely go myself. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be talking. So if I want to get my feet wet without a large audience, I would recommend Wednesday night prayer meetings at my church because nobody's there. Right now, the main Sabbath service usually holds the highest numbers in terms of members, but these side services typically have very small numbers. So start off with a youth night, assuming those are empty at your church, or a children's week, assuming they're empty, or a Sabbath school class, or a Bible study. You don't have to go up there Saturday at 11 a.m. You are allowed to, like, little by little, work yourself up. So yeah, that's that's a hack. Uh, my first time preaching also happened to be at a Wednesday night prayer meeting, and I believe there were exactly seven members. Uh, I don't remember what I preached, but I remember it was extremely short, five minutes, no, it was like eight minutes. Eight minutes, boom, I was done, and then I walked up to my mother who was there, and I'm like, how did I do? And my mother was like, oh, I wasn't listening because there's a cockroach on your shirt, and I'm like, where? And then I looked, and it was a button that was brown. She thought it was a cockroach, which it was not, and for that reason, she didn't hear me because she was like embarrassed of what people were gonna think it was a button anyway the point of all of this is that you start with a small audience you work your way up there that is great it's it's called practice which brings us to the next pointer practice the old saying goes practice makes perfect so take your sermon and practice it read it over and over again read it out loud preach to the mirror preach to your dog If it's possible, ask a deacon to allow you to rehearse inside the church during the close hours. Now, this is not always a thing that you can do, but if you can do it, it's a great way to familiarize yourself with the pulpit. Find a friend who will listen to you and give you feedback. Basically, don't show up uninitiated. Otherwise, the shock is going to be so much bigger. Uh, And bring notes. No shame in looking down in case you forget something. And you will forget. I can guarantee that better to read off a script than to stare blankly at a, at your audience because you forgot, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. I am reading off the script that I wrote. Actually, the script's on my laptop, but I have it printed here as a prop because you are allowed to do that. All right, so our next tip, start now. Don't wait. Many of us will wait until we are asked to preach in order to begin this whole process. I say stay ahead of the curve. Start preparing right now. Go through all your prayers and research and practice right now. Write those messages, back them up to the hard drive, and print them out. If and when they ask you to preach, guess what? You're ready, baby. <laughs> you got this. You've been practicing all along. All you got to do is dust off the old sermon and rehearse it. This is especially important because if your church is anything like mine, you'll be asked with less than one week, week t- week's time's preparation. It's annoying and, re- and nerve-wracking because one week is barely enough time, especially for all you newcomers. So don't be afraid to require a two weeks notice. I do it all the time. And that's actually where my notes end. So from here on out, everything shall be improvised, which is good because I can do this angle. Uh, I think it's a better for the lighting. Is it better for the lighting? Is this better lighting? Or is that better light? Oh, that's, oh, that's bright. That is definitely right. So one thing that you should never do is, is, as they say, imagine that the whole crowd is naked and then it'll be less stressful. No, trust me, that just makes it more stressful and awkward for everybody. Don't do that. Uh, Stare at a point that looks, if you don't want to look at people's faces, stare at a specific corner of the church that is in the middle. Or just stare at one person in the audience that you trust. That, that you typically works for me. Like I'll find out one friend and I'll just look at my friend the whole time and I'll pretend no one else is there. So I'm just preaching to that one friend uh, rather than doing silly things in my head. Uh, another thing that I tend to do is that I just tend to not look at anybody and just look at the corner directly opposite from the pulpit. And that way I don't have to, I can just pretend I'm all alone and I'm preaching with the preaching to people. So there's that. So yeah, uh, recap. Don't go hard on people the first day. Like, don't be like chastising and like, people, we need to stop X, Y, Z. These things are bad and you need, you're going to go to hell if you... Don't start that way. Don't, don't. Start preaching to yourself. 
start, sh make it relatable, you know, share things about you. Kind of like how I was telling you all those stories about me stuttering and Sabbath school and being a deer in the headlights. See, it's personal. You see that? Uh, if your church is okay with it, throw some humor in there. I know some churches are very anti-jokes, so that's something to find out first. I, I love to use humor because it, it takes the edge off me, uh, but I don't ever would take the edge of you. Uh, have notes. You're going to forget things. Make it a short presentation, one that everybody can enjoy, and uh, practice it. Practice makes perfect. Uh, did I admit, did I, did I forget very quickly another point for the, uh, the, 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 the practice? Yeah, show up on, on days that are empty. You know, do Sabbath school and, and so forth. In fact, that's another thing. You can just volunteer to teach a Sabbath school lesson one Sabbath. Uh, and that's a great way to get your feet wet. I, I didn't write that in there. So, so yes, uh, typically keep it short, practice, make it relatable, have it be a message that you're also passionate about, uh, share your testimony if you have one. I kind of don't really have one. I mean, I do, but it's not really a fun one to listen to, kind of long, kind of boring. Uh, but yeah, so now that you have a whole bunch of little pointers of how you can do a, a message get at it start right now see where it takes you know I'm, I'm assuming nobody's asking you right now to preach so it shouldn't be too much of a problem and my uh phone is vibrating hopefully that's not cutting in to what i'm saying but i'm but i'm wrapping up so i see i lost my place because the phone notification went off where was i yes so if and when churches open up this is something uh, that you may want to consider. I would recommend you start writing those messages right now while the churches are closed. That way, when they open up, you got this. See? And even if they don't open up, guess what? Digital evangelism. Best way to do it without an audience is if you're sitting in your room alone like I am right now. Right? Right? Think about it. You don't have to worry about people judging you and right now there is no time limit there is no format it's just me talking here so you don't have to worry about the other people uh oh is it going to be too short or too long there's nobody here you're talking to a camera or i'm talking to a camera but if you do digital evangelism you're going to be mainly talking to a camera so the typical traditions and format of a church no longer need apply unless you want them to apply which if you do i respect that either way but that's kind of the whole point and that's pretty much the end of my message which again, I'm tired of calling it Preaching 101. Did I give an in-depth study of how to be a, a, a preacher? No, I didn't. I just give little tips because this is called Thursday Talk. It was mainly me talking. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope this was a blessing to all of you. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do this next Thursday, but I'll definitely do that the upcoming one. So I'm, I'm probably gonna do two Thursday Talks in a month, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, with that said, uh, I'm done talking, so I'm going to bob on my head, do the final prayer, and my phone keeps vibrating, so hopefully that's not cutting out the uh, volume. So with that said, let's go. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for giving me this inspiration of doing Thursday Talks. And this is a message that I feel many people needed to hear. It's okay. You too can speak the gospel. We don't need to be like Moses, worrying about all the things that go wrong. You are the Lord. You give tongues to the mute, and you make the blind see. So you're going to be with us. You're going to provide, and the people will see your Holy Spirit in us. So for all those of you who are watching, whether you are a seasoned veteran of the church, whether you're a teenager, maybe you're a preteen, or maybe you're a youth director who's also watching this, uh, this is a great resource, and I want you to know and your people to know that you too can preach, right? It's okay. You don't have to be the televangelist on your first time. But the Lord, you Lord, you want us to share that gospel. And so I ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, everybody listening to this, touch your hearts, that they might be open to the idea of going, of stepping out in faith and delivering your message. Amen. And yes, that is it. I believe I spoke for exactly 30 minutes. So yeah, 
I didn't have a set time limit, but there we go, 30 minutes. And with that said, have a great evening, everybody, and good night. Bye.